When Advert launched the Verve 47, this beauty here back in 2020 at the Miami Boat Show, it injected a touch of Italian flair into the hugely popular outboard market in the US. In fact, they sold eight of them in the opening days of the show. But today, it's the turn of her baby sister, the Verve 42, and we're gonna take a look around. Like the Verve 47, the racy exterior lines are by Francesco Struglia and the strip glazing in the hull has become something of a design hallmark. Worth noting also is that while the hull is fiberglass, everything above the rub rail and the deck is carbon fiber to keep the weight down and the center of gravity low. I've got to say there's an awful lot going on for a boat that's a fraction under 13 meters in length. And that's partly because a lot of her features are specified for the US market, which you wouldn't normally find on a European boat. The big innovation here is this fold down bulwark, which becomes a beach club platform, which makes access to the sea so much easier on a boat with outboards in the stern. Another novelty is the table. Which table, you ask? Well, actually it's under my feet, as as you can see, it's flush with the deck and covered with the same composite material as the rest of the cockpit. But this can be raised to become a dining table and comes with its own fitted cover for that purpose. Or it can be fixed halfway up and covered with infill cushions to become a sunbed. Behind the driving position, we have a galley unit with grill, fridge, ice maker, and sink. Under my feet here is a big drainable powered ice box. There's another one in the corner under the sofa seating, and there's a third one in the bow. So whatever happens on this boat, you're not gonna run out of cool drinks. And underneath the table here, and you can actually see it better when it's in the raised position, there's another hatch to a technical compartment with easy access to the cola generator, the battery chargers, the fuel filters, and there's a Seakeeper 4 gyro stabilizer down there. And before we leave this area in the transom, there's a hatch with room inside for a sea bob and an inflatable paddleboard. And there are even two electrical sockets for recharging the sea bob or attaching an air compressor in case you want to blow up the inflatable toys. Moving forward, we have an asymmetric layout with access from the port side. And this is to increase the size of the sunbed, which extends almost to the opposite bulwark. And there's plenty of room for four adults on the sunbed. The whole area can be covered by an awning supported on four carbon fiber poles, which have their own dedicated storage underneath the cushions. Creature comforts include another ice box under the cushion here, which I mentioned before, plenty of cup or bottle holders, and speakers and subwoofers in case you want a bit of music up front here as well. Moving below deck, we have the galley to port. On this unit, there's one cooking hob. You can have two, but as it figured on a weekend boat of this type, you're probably not going to be preparing gourmet meals. Opposite the galley, we have the head, and it's a big bathroom for the size of boat with a real shower store. Again, Azimut in its wisdom reckoned that although there are two cabins for four adults, not everybody is going to be sleeping on board, although they will all be using the head. So that's the reason for the oversized bathroom, which is shared between the two cabins. Accommodation, right, here in the bow, we have a dinette which can be converted into a V-berth. At the touch of a button here, the table can be lowered and with filling cushions, this becomes a comfy double bed. You also have a 42 inch Magic TV behind the mirror here. And what about some privacy, you ask? Easy, you just pull down this spring-loaded blackout screen. Sometimes the easiest low-tech solutions are the simplest. The main cabin is actually on a lower level amidships. It's compact, but not at all pokey. And there is a porthole, an opening porthole for natural light and fresh air. Features, okay. 
She has a top speed of 45 knots and a cruising speed of around 33 knots. With 474 US gallons of fuel in the tank, that's about 1,800 litres, she has a range of around 200 nautical miles. Press this button here and you start or stop all three engines at the same time. Or you can do it individually by pressing the three buttons at the front of the control panel. Of course, you have manual trim control with the regular switch on the side of the throttle, but you also have integrated active trim. Press this button here and the Humphrey trim blades are activated automatically. Okay, so let's see how she handles. She's in one lever control, three, two, one, and here we go. Okay. I can feel those combined 1,350 horsepower already pushing me back into the seat. Michael Peters, one of the top names in the world for this kind of fast planing hull, designed the double step and the ventilated tunnel for less drag. There's quite a bit of chop today and the hull feels quite feisty, but also rock solid in the water. Okay. Let's keep on accelerating. Forty-three, forty-four, and that's it. We're at forty-five knots. Here we go to starboard. Oh yes. As I said, feisty, but she feels like she's on rails. And back the other way, back to port. And I'm going to do it again because it's so much fun. <laughs> and surprisingly dry up front in the bow, notwithstanding the waves. And the other thing I didn't mention before are the side windows which are not only useful for when perhaps you're docking in a tight berth and you can see where your fenders are, but when you're on the plane, you can see all that white water at the side of the boat. The Ver 42 is actually the smallest boat in the azimuth range, but you wouldn't know it from her onboard features and performance. She's specifically designed for fun weekends afloat and is ideally suited to both coastal and freshwater playgrounds. Now, that could be the Florida Keys or the Great Lakes, but it could just as easily be, I don't know, Lake Como or Portofino. <laughs> 